Rudolf Otto, the 25th of September 1869 to the 6th of March 1937, was an eminent German Lutheran theologian, philosopher, and comparative religionist. He is regarded as one of the most influential scholars of religion in the early 20th century and is best known for his concept of the numinous, a profound emotional experience he argued was at the heart of the world's religions. While his work started in the domain of liberal Christian theology, its main thrust was always apologetical, seeking to defend religion against naturalist critiques. Otto eventually came to conceive of his work as part of a science of religion, which was divided into the philosophy of religion, the history of religion, and the psychology of religion. Life Born in Pain near Hanover, Otto was raised in a pious Christian family. He attended the Gymnasium Andrianum in Hildesheim and studied at the universities of Erlangen and Göttingen, where he wrote his dissertation on Martin Luther's understanding of the Holy Spirit Die Anschauung von Heiligen Geist bei Luther, eine historisch dogmatische Untersuchung, and his habilitation on Kant Naturalistische und religios Weltansicht. By 1906, he held a position as extraordinary professor, and in 1910 he received an honorary doctorate from the University of Gießen. Otto's fascination with non-Christian religions was awakened during an extended trip from 1911–1912 through North Africa, Palestine, British India, China, Japan, and the United States. He cited a 1911 visit to a Moroccan synagogue as a key inspiration for the theme of the holy he would later develop. Otto became a member of the German parliament in 1913 and retained this position through the First World War. In 1917, he spearheaded an effort to simplify the system of weighting votes in Prussian elections. He then served in the post-war Constituent Assembly in 1918, and remained involved in the politics of the Weimar Republic. Meanwhile, in 1915, he became ordinary professor at the University of Breslau, and in 1917, at the University of Marburg's Divinity School, then one of the most famous Protestant seminaries in the world. Although he received several other calls, he remained in Marburg for the rest of his life. He retired in 1929 but continued writing afterward. On 6 March 1937, he died of pneumonia, after suffering serious injuries falling about 20 metres from a tower in October 1936. There were lasting rumours that the fall was a suicide attempt but this has never been confirmed. He is buried in the Marburg Cemetery. Thought Topic. Influences In his early years Otto was most influenced by the German idealist theologian and philosopher Friedrich Schleiermacher and his conceptualization of the category of the religious as a type of emotion or consciousness irreducible to ethical or rational epistemologies. In this, Otto saw Schleiermacher as having recaptured a sense of holiness lost in the Age of Enlightenment. Schleiermacher described this religious feeling as one of absolute dependence. Otto eventually rejected this characterization as too closely analogous to earthly dependence and emphasized the complete otherness of the religious feeling from the mundane world. See below. In 1904, while a student at the University of Göttingen, Otto became a proponent of the philosophy of Jakob Fries along with two fellow students. Topic: Early works. Otto's first book, Naturalism and Religion 1904, divides the world ontologically into the mental and the physical, a position reflecting Cartesian dualism. Otto argues consciousness cannot be explained in terms of physical or neural processes, and also accords it epistemological primacy by arguing all knowledge of the physical world is mediated by personal experience. On the other hand, he disagrees with Descartes' characterization of the mental as a rational realm, positing instead that rationality is built upon a nonrational intuitive realm. In 1909, he published his next book, The Philosophy of Religion Based on Kant and Fries, in which he examines the thought of Kant and Fries and from their attempts to build a philosophical framework within which religious experience can take place. While Kant's philosophy said thought occurred in a rational domain, Fries diverged and said it also occurred in practical and aesthetic domains. Otto pursued Fries' line of thinking further and suggested another nonrational domain of the thought, the religious. 
He felt intuition was valuable in rational domains like mathematics, but subject to the corrective of reason, whereas religious intuitions might not be subject to that corrective. These two early works were influenced by the rationalist approaches of Immanuel Kant and Jakob Fries. Otto stated that they focused on the rational aspects of the divine, the ratio eterna, whereas his next and most influential book focused on the non-rational aspects of the divine. Topic. The idea of the holy Otto's most famous work, The Idea of the Holy, was first published in German in 1917 as Das Heilige über das Irrationale in der Idee des Gottlichen und sein Verhaltnis zum Rationalen. It was one of the most successful German theological books of the 20th century, has never gone out of print, and is now available in about 20 languages. The first English translation was published in 1923 under the title The Idea of the Holy, an inquiry into the non-rational factor in the idea of the divine and its relation to the rational. Otto felt people should first do serious rational study of God, before turning to the non-rational element of God as he did in this book. In The Idea of the Holy, Otto writes that while the concept of the holy is often used to convey moral perfection, and does entail this, it contains another distinct element, beyond the ethical sphere, for which he coined the term numinous based on the Latin word numen, divine power. The term is etymologically unrelated to Immanuel Kant's noumenon, a Greek term which Kant used to refer to an unknowable reality underlying sensations of the thing, he explains the numinous as a non-rational, non-sensory experience or feeling whose primary and immediate object is outside the self. This mental state presents itself as gans and dear, holy other, a condition absolutely sui generis and incomparable whereby the human being finds himself utterly abashed. Otto argues that because the numinous is irreducible and sui generis it cannot be defined in terms of other concepts or experiences, and that the reader must therefore be guided and led on by consideration and discussion of the matter through the ways of his own mind, until he reach the point at which the numinous in him perforce begins to stir. In other words, our X cannot, strictly speaking, be taught, it can only be evoked, awakened in the mind." Chapters 4–6 are devoted to attempting to evoke the numinous and its various aspects. He writes, the feeling of it may at times come sweeping like a gentle tide pervading the mind with a tranquil mood of deepest worship. It may pass over into a more set and lasting attitude of the soul, continuing, as it were, thrillingly vibrant and resonant, until at last it dies away and the soul resumes its profane, non-religious mood of everyday experience. It has its crude, barbaric antecedents and early manifestations, and again it may be developed into something beautiful and pure and glorious. It may become the hushed, trembling, and speechless humility of the creature in the presence of whom or what in the presence of that which is a mystery inexpressible and above all creatures. He describes it as a mystery Latin, mysterium, that is at once terrifying tremendum, and fascinating fascinates. Otto felt that the numinous was most strongly present in the Old and New Testaments, but that it was also present in all other religions. According to Mark Wynne in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, the idea of the holy falls within a paradigm in the philosophy of emotion in which emotions are seen as including an element of perception with intrinsic epistemic value that is neither mediated by thoughts nor simply a response to physiological factors. Otto therefore understands religious experience as having mind-independent phenomenological content rather than being an internal response to belief in a divine reality. Otto applied this model specifically to religious experiences, which he felt were qualitatively different from other emotions. Topic. Later works In Mysticism East and West, published in German in 1926, Otto compares and contrasts the views of the medieval German Christian mystic Meister Eckhart with those of the influential Hindu philosopher Adi Shankara, the key figure of the Advaita Vedanta school. Influence <inaudible> 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 Otto left a broad influence on theology, religious studies, and philosophy of religion in the first half of the 20th century and beyond. Theology and spirituality 
Karl Barth, an influential Protestant theologian contemporary to Otto, acknowledged Otto's influence and approved a similar conception of God as Gans Andir or Totaliter Aliter, that fits into the apophatic theology tradition. Otto was also one of the very few modern theologians to whom C.S. Lewis indicates a debt, particularly to the idea of the numinous in the problem of pain. In that book Lewis offers his own description of the numinous. Suppose you were told there was a tiger in the next room, you would know that you were in danger and would probably feel fear. But if you were told, there is a ghost in the next room, and believed it, you would feel, indeed, what is often called fear, but of a different kind. It would not be based on the knowledge of danger, for no one is primarily afraid of what a ghost may do to him, but of the mere fact that it is a ghost. It is uncanny rather than dangerous, and the special kind of fear it excites may be called dread. With the uncanny one has reached the fringes of the numinous. Now suppose that you were told simply, there is a mighty spirit in the room, and believed it. Your feelings would then be even less like the mere fear of danger, but the disturbance would be profound. You would feel wonder and a certain shrinking, a sense of inadequacy to cope with such a visitant and of prostration before it, an emotion which might be expressed in Shakespeare's words, under it my genius is rebuked. This feeling may be described as awe, and the object which excites it as the numinous. German-American theologian Paul Tillich acknowledged Otto's influence on him, as did Otto's most famous German pupil, Gustav Mensching from Bonn University. Otto's views can be seen in the noted Catholic theologian Karl Rahner's presentation of man as a being of transcendence. More recently, Otto has also influenced the American Franciscan friar and inspirational speaker Richard Rohr. Otto's ideas have also exerted an influence on non Christian theology and spirituality. They have been discussed by Orthodox Jewish theologians, including Joseph Soloveitchik and Eliezer Berkowitz. The Iranian American Sufi religious studies scholar and public intellectual Reza Aslan understands religion as an institutionalized system of symbols and metaphors with which a community of faith can share with each other their numinous encounter with the Divine Presence." Further afield, Otto's work received words of appreciation from Indian independence leader Mohandas Gandhi. Aldous Huxley, a major proponent of perennialism, was influenced by Otto. In The Doors of Perception he writes, the literature of religious experience abounds in references to the pains and terrors overwhelming those who have come, too suddenly, face to face with some manifestation of the mysterium tremendum. In theological language, this fear is due to the incompatibility between man's egotism and the divine purity, between man's self-aggravated separateness and the infinity of God. Topic. Religious studies, psychology, and philosophy In the idea of the holy and other works, Otto set out a paradigm for the study of religion that focused on the need to realize the religious as a non-reducible, original category in its own right. This paradigm was heavily criticized between approximately 1950 and 1990 but has seen a resurgence since then, as its phenomenological aspects have become more apparent. The eminent Romanian-American historian of religion and philosopher Mircea Iliadi used the concepts from the idea of the holy as the starting point for his own 1954 book, The Sacred and the Profane. Carl Gustav Jung, the founder of analytic psychology, applied the concept of the numinous to psychology and psychotherapy, arguing it was therapeutic and brought greater self-understanding, and stating that to him religion was about a careful and scrupulous observation of the numinosum. The American Episcopal priest John A. Sanford applied the ideas of both Otto and Jung in his writings on religious psychotherapy. The philosopher and sociologist Max Horkheimer, a member of the Frankfurt School, has taken the concept of holy other in his 1970 book Die Sensucht nach dem Gans Anderen, longing for the entirely other. Other philosophers to acknowledge Otto were, for instance, Martin Heidegger, Leo Strauss, Hans Georg Gadamer, who was critical when younger but respectful in his old age, Max Scheler, Edmund Husserl, W. T. Stace, Joachim Wach, and Hans Jonas. The war veteran and writer Ernst Junger and the historian and scientist Joseph Needham also cited his influence. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ecumenical activities. Otto was heavily involved in ecumenical activities between Christian denominations and between Christianity and other religions. 
He experimented with adding a time similar to a Quaker moment of silence to the Lutheran liturgy as an opportunity for worshippers to experience the numinous. Works <laughs> <laughs> A full bibliography of Otto's works is given in Robert F. Davidson, Rudolf Otto's Interpretation of Religion, Princeton, 1947, pp. 207 to 9. Topic. In German. Naturalistische und religiös Weltansicht, 1904. Die Friesisch Religionsphilosophie, 1909. Das Heilige über das Irrationale in der Idee des Gottlichen und sein Verhaltnis zum Rationalen Breslau, 1917. West Ostlich Mystik 1926. Die Nadenreligion in Dians und das Christentum 1930. Reich Gottes und Menschensen 1934. Topic. English translations Naturalism and Religion, Trans J. Arthur Thompson and Margaret Thompson, London, Williams and Norgate, 1907, originally published 1904. The Life and Ministry of Jesus, According to the Critical Method, Chicago, Open Court, 1908, ISBN 0 8370 4648 3, full text online at Internet Archive. The Idea of the Holy, Trans J. W. Harvey, New York, OUP, 1923, Second EDN, 1950, Reprint, New York, 1970, ISBN 0-19-500210-5, originally published 1917, full text online. Christianity and the Indian Religion of Grace, Madras, 1928. India's Religion of Grace and Christianity Compared and Contrasted, Trans F. H. Foster, New York, London, 1930. The Census Numinis as the Historical Basis of Religion, Hibbert Journal 29, 1930, 1-8. The Philosophy of Religion Based on Kant and Fries, Trans Ebb Dicker, London, 1931 originally published 1909. Religious Essays, a supplement to The Idea of the Holy, Trans B. Lunn, London, 1931. Mysticism East and West, a comparative analysis of the nature of mysticism, Trans B. L. Bracey and R. C. Payne, New York, 1932 originally published 1926. In the Sphere of the Holy, Hibbert Journal 31, 1932-3, 413-6. The Original Gita, The Song of the Supreme Exalted One London, 1939. The Kingdom of God and the Son of Man, A Study in the History of Religion, Trans F. V. Filson and B. L. Wolfe, Boston, 1943 Autobiographical and Social Essays Berlin, Walter de Gruyter, 1996, ISBN 3-11-0145189 See also Topic References Topic Further reading Almond, Philip C. Rudolf Otto, An Introduction to His Philosophical Theology, Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina Press, 1984. Davidson, Robert F. Rudolf Otto's Interpretation of Religion, Princeton, 1947. Gooch, Todd A., The Numinous and Modernity, An Interpretation of Rudolf Otto's Philosophy of Religion. Preface by Otto Kaiser and Wolfgang Drexler, Berlin and New York, Walter de Gruyter, 2000. ISBN 3-11-016799-9. Ludwig, Theodore M., Otto, Rudolf in Encyclopedia of Religion, Vol. 11 1987, pp. 139-141, Melissa, Raphael, Rudolf Otto and the Concept of Holiness, Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1997 Mock, Daniel 2012. Rudolf Otto, Ein Kleine Biographie. Preface by Gerardus van der Leeu. Amsterdam, Uitbeverage Abraxas. ISBN 978-90-79133-08-6. Mock, Daniel et al., 2002. In which the UIT het Weston, Beschowingen over Rudolf Otto. Preface by Rudolf Boek. Amsterdam, de Appelblossom Pers, i.e., Uitbeverage Abraxas.
ISBN 90-70459-36-1 Print, 978-90-79133-00-0 E-book. Moore, John Morrison, Theories of Religious Experience, with special reference to James, Otto and Bergson, New York, 1938 Topic. External links Otto and the Numinous Numinous, references from several thinkers at Earth Pages. C.A. International Congress, Rudolf Otto, University of Marburg, 2012 Works by Rudolf Otto at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Rudolf Otto at Internet Archive